Welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. I really appreciate you stopping by today and spending some time in the shop with me. And I'm hoping that you're going to learn a few things. What I want to talk about today is actually how to set up this machine to be able to make the first carving. When you first turn on the machine, it doesn't have any idea where it is. So typically, you will go through the process of homing the machine. And what that will do is bring it all the way down to this front left-hand corner. And then from there, we need to be able to tell the machine where it is in relationship to the project. So then we're gonna move this machine over into this project area. Now, typically, people will use the bottom left-hand corner or they'll use the center of the project to be able to establish that starting point. From there, the last thing that we need to be able to do is set the Z height, and that's the height of the bit, so that the machine will know exactly where it is in relation to where that material is as far as the height. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One of the ways is just to use a simple probe like this. Now this probe is part of the Fox Alien. Now most probes that you're gonna find out there will be of a different thickness. So this is the one that I have for the Fox Alien Vasco. So how do we know exactly how thick it is? One of the ways that you can get the thickness is be able to get a set of calipers and be able to measure it. And if I measure this, The thickness of this comes out to about 14.92 of the millimeters. There's actually a more accurate way to be able to determine the thickness of our probe. Each probe is going to be a little bit different. Depends on who made it and if you made your own. Today I want to use the open build software to be able to control the CNC machine. One of the things that you're going to find when you use the open build software, it is an amazing product. It's free and it works extremely well. On their website, you can actually purchase the probe to be able to do the Z-axis, and you can also purchase a three-axis probe. The default settings are already set in the Open Build software. Now, this particular probe is actually a little bit thinner. Okay, the standard probe that comes with the Open Build software is, if I remember correctly, about 20 millimeters. This one, as we just saw, was 14.92. I also want to show you a different way to be able to get the thickness of this probe. So let's get into that with the Open Build software. When you first open up the Open Build controller, it's going to say that there's no USB or serial ports there, and this is a very light green, so there's nothing to connect to. If I add in the USB port, now it actually identifies exactly where I have my software on the COM5. And this green connect is now a dark green. So I can click on that and it will bring up the uh, Gerbil software. You can see all that information right here. And then you're also going to see this flashing red bell and that's to unlock the alarm because at this point, nothing will move until you unlock that. So by clicking it, it's now ready to be able to move. The first thing I want to do is come over to the Home All and click on that. And it will actually go through the homing process. And this will bring it right down to the bottom left-hand corner of the machine itself and this will be the machine zero position this sets the x y and zero to the machine zero position i'm going to work with the assumption today that we had a project in mind to be able to do something with the auxiliary wasteboard so the zero that I'm going to do with the z-axis is going to be based on the surface of the material itself. I now have the machine right down at the bottom left hand corner and that is at the machine zero position. At this point let's move it over. I'm going to switch to the inch mode for the moment and I'm going to move this over 
about eight inches. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the Y axis. And that will bring me up to the center of the uh, auxiliary waste board. And I actually have a little X right there in the center. Now, to be able to Z this information, I want to be able to go down a little bit closer because I'm actually quite high right now. And I want to Z this off of the auxiliary work surface itself. Now, within less than an inch, I'm going to switch to this. I'll lower it a little bit further. Now I'm real close. I'll grab my piece of paper and slide it underneath. And go one, let's go up one, because that's going to be too tight, I do believe. Let's switch over to the point zero one, and then let's go down until this paper And it will just barely touch. We'll move it until it just barely catches. And there it is. It is now touching and it's not moving. So that is the zero position. I'm going to set that right now at the zero. I will now raise this up one inch. We'll get this out of the way. Don't need the paper anymore for the moment. And I said I was going to tell you a different way to be able to measure the actual probe itself. So at this point, we're going to connect the, put the probe underneath. And we're going to go through this process one more time. Now, I have to start out with this point one because I don't have an inch. But let's get a little bit closer. I think that's close enough. We'll switch over to the 0 0.01 of an inch and we'll do the same exact thing. We'll slip the paper underneath and then we'll go ever so slowly until that just touches. And that's it. So there it is. We are at 0 0.60 of an inch. If I switch this over to the millimeters, that's actually 15.24 uh, millimeters, and that's right at that point. So that's the thickness of our probe itself. Again, I'm going to just switch this over to inches and raise that up an inch, get the paper out of the way, and we'll get the probe out of the way. I'm going to click on this right here and it brings up a little window and it has probe Z zero wizard. And when I go into this section, you can see this was the plate thickness from a different um, plate that I had, but this one is 15.24. So I have that now. So that's done. It saves it automatically. And so I can cancel out of that. And if you just want to verify it, we'll click on that again. We'll go back to the wizard and you can see that's 15.24. So at this point, the machine now, the controller recognizes the probe as being 15.24 millimeters. So anytime that we probe now, that's what it's going to be based on. So we'll get out of this. And we can now actually, if you wish, go to the probe and I can hook up the probe. Now then, we're a little bit closer. I'm going to go through the probe. And I know that this is the thickness. And this is something where you can adjust if you have different probe that you use. But I'm going to confirm the position. And now I'll hit the probe. And now it will go down and touch. The probe now is completely done. We have this thing zeroed. 
it's 0.797. If I look at the millimeters, why is it showing the 20.24? Because it retracted another five millimeters up above the probe itself. So that is exactly where it needs to be. So we can remove this and we are set. And that's how you can change and get a very accurate reading. Remember what we had with the calipers. The calipers said it was 14.99. Little bit of a difference. Now that's a very small amount different between the 14.99 and the 15.24. And for most projects, that wouldn't be an issue. But if you want something that was very, very detailed and maybe it did matter, then this is the easiest, best way to be able to get the correct thickness of the probe. Now you notice when I went in to set the actual height of the probe that I was using, it was 14.99. The default setting that was in the machine originally was at 20 millimeters. And because I do so much testing and I try out so many different probes that I needed to be able to make that adjustment for that specific probe. Because I have now attached that probe to the Fox Alien Basco. One of the things that I want to point out, there's a lot of different controller type software out there. The Open Builds is something that I have been using now for quite a while and I really love it. And it's so easy to be able to make those little changes like that to customize it for your specific needs. Now, don't forget, I also have used the Universal G-Code Sender and I've shown that in previous videos how to be able to use not only the Z probe, but also the three axis touch plate. So this was a real short video today that I wanted to be able to get this information out to you because I know it's been frustrating and I've had a number of questions because the only thing people could see was that the default setting was in there and they couldn't find out exactly how to change it. Well, there you go, the answer is there. I wanna take this opportunity to thank everybody for watching this very short video. I think it's important though, that everybody understands exactly how to customize their machine to be able to fit the software. OpenVille software is very adaptable to just about any situation and I really enjoy it. Unfortunately, I don't have the OpenVille uh, Z probe and I don't have the three axis probe. As a result, I've got to go in and set those custom features, which as I've shown is pretty easy to be able to do. Now at this point, the Fox Alien probe that I'm going to have is the one I will use for that particular machine. But if I ever change and go with something else, all I need to be able to do is test it out by being able to Z the machine to the surface and then Z again to find out the height or the thickness of the probe. Real simple, but you don't see people doing that. So thank you very much for watching this very short video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And by the way, don't forget, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there. I'd appreciate it if you haven't done so already. Bye-bye now.